thank you very much for your words and for choosing Lisbon. I would like to thank uh, uh, Christy and uh, to thank you all for being here. I'd like to start by welcoming you all to Portugal and to Lisbon in particular. The weather is quite good, uh, you know that, but you're gonna see that uh, the country is very welcoming. We are very proud about being welcoming. Our tourism grew from 10 million eight years ago to 19 million, and we are already very close to the 20 million that we are going to reach this year. So, uh, because we are very welcoming. And this is the first message that I wanted to leave here. In a time where uh, people are building walls, we are building bridges. And this is what Portugal has done for centuries. We have discovered new continents, we have put uh, people in contact, and this is what we are proud of our history, is about welcoming people, is about uh, building bridges with Africa, with Brazil, with Europe, we are a proud member of Europe, building bridges across the Atlantic. And this is part of our uh, way of being. It's not a moment, it's an old history. We welcome all in our country. And everybody feels very welcome here and come back. And this is something we like and we are very proud of. The second idea that I would like to, to present you here today, we had a crisis, we had an adjustment all over Europe, but that is something of the past. Portugal uh, is accelerating its economic growth. It has a deficit inside the European rules, is in a very good moment in terms of reducing unemployment, although we still have a very high unemployment all over Europe and in Portugal as well. But we had a very good year last year, not just a record in terms of tourism, also a record in terms of exports, and also a record in the new century in terms of creating jobs. This is a good time for invest in Portugal. But most of the companies, especially companies in technology, are coming, for, are coming to Portugal for completely different reasons. And we had in this last year only, but on the last 10 and 15 years, a lot of technology companies that moved to Portugal, some uh, a lot of uh, jobs, some just uh, uh, er some areas of, of development. We have Cisco, we have Microsoft with some, uh, with some important nearshoring uh, uh, offices here. But we, has, we have also Altis telecommunication firms, Tal's a French firm of uh, engineering, uh, Bosch that is creating a research center in the north of the country and another research center uh, in, the, in the middle of the country. Uh, one of these with 400 people the other one with 200. We have several investments, and most of these investments have the same trace. Investments that use highly skilled talent. Highly skilled talent, both in the area of engineering, in the area of financial services, and in the area of, uh, of uh, computer and uh, computer development, software, uh, programming, and so on. This is happening because we had a, a huge change in our universities. And this change was different in Portugal than it was in most European countries. When you look at the qualifications of uh, people of 55 years old in Germany and of people of 25 years old, what you see is that the percentage of people with a degree is exactly the same. In Portugal, it's four times higher in the, in the younger generation. This means that we have a young generation that is very qualified, but is fitting into a, 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 an economy that was built with a different structure of sectors. So we are having a lot of structural change, but at, uh, at the same time, we are having a lot of opportunities for uh, picking talent. And every company that is moving to Portugal is talking about talent. 20 years ago, we didn't have any university in the top 500 in the world. Today, we have five, a number that is higher than Ireland, 
a number that is similar to the numbers of Belgium or the Netherlands or Denmark. This is a, a huge change. And these high quality universities are producing high quality engineering that we have the drama of seeing immigrating a lot of them. And what we want is to fix them in Portugal. And what the firms are discovering, some of them discovered because the Portuguese engineers moved there, what they discover is that they can come here and work with them in our territory and work with them in Portugal. And what they are finding out is that when they use this talent, when they use these skills that are available here and that are scarce everywhere else, and what we want is to make them scarce here, and I, I, I guess that's going to be the tendency anyway, what they are finding here is that this uh, talent is available at very competitive costs. So a lot of these firms are moving here mostly because of talent, but they are expanding here also because they find high quality uh, IT infrastructures, but they are also finding that they can work here for a fraction of the costs that they would have to pay in Paris or London or Ireland or any other European country. This is a very interesting uh, combination for shared services, and this is the reason why we are being so successful in earshoring. And this is uh, the invitation I'll make to you, is to think about Portugal for your shared services and think about Portugal not for your call centers. We have room for call centers and we have a few call centers. But what is expanding much more now, it's engineering, financial services, and software and computer sciences. We are also attracting a lot of startups. And this has to do with the, our own policies. We have a program, Startup Portugal, that has a specific uh, aim of attracting these, uh, these startups, and we created very interesting incentives. But much more important than this was bringing to Portugal the Web Summit. The Web Summit was a trigger of interest of startups, of uh, uh, accelerating firms, of uh, near-shoring software services firms. Why? Because it, it gave high visibility to an ecosystem that already existed in Portugal. All these tech people, when they came to Portugal, what they saw was a country with a lot of very interesting firms, a lot of very interesting projects, a lot of people that they could share the same experience with. But what they saw as well was a country where they would feel at home, where they could move with high quality of life, with high security, we are the fourth safest, safest country in the world. And all the other three that are above us are very cold. So it's not very safe to walk on the street in the winter there. But the most interesting thing was to hear the uh, Perry, the, the, the organizer of the Web Summit, saying, why he moved the Web Summit to Portugal, and why he moved the headquarters of the Web Summit to Portugal. And he moved to Portugal because he found that the ecosystem was very interesting, the talent was here, but when he had to organize a big event of 15, uh, 50 or 50,000 people, highly intensive views of technology, what he found out was that in Portugal our network resisted, our services gave a very interesting answer, and he could do not the same thing he was doing in Ireland, but something much bigger because the event is growing without any technical failure, with much better catering and with much better weather. So this is my challenge, and uh, of course I could talk to you about fiscal incentives, I could talk about, to you about the innovation policy of the government, but what I would say to you is put Portugal on the map and do your comparison. And when you compare the costs, 
when you compare the quality of the talent, when you compare the closeness to uh, the European markets and also to, to the other side of the Atlantic, when you see that you are, we are in the same time zone as, uh, as uh, England and that we speak uh, in Portugal very clearly, uh, most people speak English, but also French, Spanish, and of course Portuguese, which is uh, the fifth most important language in the world. And people tend to forget that Brazil speaks Portuguese. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can be quite competitive, and we are not going to win all the cases. And if we won all the cases, I'm pretty sure that a lot of the competitive advantages would move because the wages would have to go up, the costs of uh, the office would have to go up. But I think we present a very interesting case. I think this event is very interesting. I want to welcome you all, and I want to thank uh, uh, Christy and uh, Joe as well for choosing Portugal, and I hope you don't regret this, and I'm pretty sure that the ones that are here, and mostly the ones that aren't here, are not regretting the experience. Thank you very much, and a fantastic event for you.